This is the Cato Daily Podcast for Monday, November 9th, 2020. I'm Caleb Brown. Did libertarians spoil 2020 for Donald Trump and effectively hand the presidency to Joe Biden? Many Republicans seem to think so and have taken to social media and the airwaves to air those grievances. But as Cato's David Bowes points out, it's still not exactly clear what happened. In at least four closely contested races uh, for electoral college votes for the president, the libertarian candidate, uh, Joe Jorgensen, exceeded significantly uh, the difference between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. And uh, in those uh, four states that Joe Biden won, uh, some people are saying, hey, the libertarian, quote unquote, spoiled this election that otherwise would have gone to Donald Trump. So how do we begin to evaluate that kind of claim and, and, and what assumptions go into that claim? Uh, well, there's a few things going on there. Um, first, four years ago, about 8 million voters voted for someone other than Trump or Clinton, and the libertarian Gary Johnson got more than half of that. This year, it looks like only about 3 million, 2% of the vote, uh, did not go to Biden or Trump, uh, and Jorgensen, uh, again, getting uh, somewhat more than half of that, about 1.2% this time. So there's a there's a body of voters that in a close election, both of those close elections could have made the difference. Now, what I found um, was that on Wednesday morning, when Trump was up in the early counts of in-person voting, Democrats were yelling at libertarians on Twitter saying, you jerks kept Trump in office because they, it's like they were assuming that the libertarians would have voted for Biden if they hadn't voted libertarian. And then when Biden moved ahead in the states you're referring to, conservatives on Facebook were complaining that libertarians cost Trump the election. Uh, Governor Scott Walker of Wisconsin was one of those. They were assuming that Libertarians would have voted for Trump if they hadn't had a libertarian alternative. So it seemed like both sides seemed to assume that their candidate, their candidate would have gotten the votes of libertarians and that they were being wrongly deprived of their rightful property. Chuck Todd uh, on Meet the Press, as of this recording, it was yesterday, he said, it sure looks like we just reran the 2016 election and Gary Johnson voters voted for Joe Biden. Well, that's an interesting claim. And we do have some evidence, which isn't conclusive, about how Gary Johnson voters might have voted. And Gary Johnson voters is a good way to put it, because sometimes people say, you libertarians, you you people like Cato and Reason, you cost Trump the election or uh, you cost Hillary the election uh, four years ago. But Gary Johnson got about four and a half million votes. And those people are not all readers of Reason magazine or donors to Cato. Um, he may have gotten disgusted with both of them voters, and they may or may not have been particularly libertarian. So Gary Johnson voters is a good way to describe them. That's all we really know about them. So what do we know now? Well, a month or so ago, there was a poll by Pew Research in which they asked people who said they voted for a third party before, which was probably Gary Johnson or the Green candidate, uh, Jill Stein, but could also have been the conservative uh, anti-Trump candidate, Evan McMullen. So all of that group together were asked, how are you going to vote this year? 49% said they were leaning toward Biden, 26% said Trump, and about the same number said they were going to vote for a third party again. So that would suggest Chuck Todd was right. An exit poll, uh, one of the, the, the exit polls said of the 5% of respondents who actually went to the polls, who didn't do a mail-in ballot, uh, who said they had voted third party in 2016, 62% said they preferred Biden and just 24% for Trump. That implies uh, a much smaller number for Jorgensen or the Green Party candidate this year. Now, people don't always reliably report how they voted four years ago. They don't always reliably report uh, how they voted this time. But it suggests there that of the people who voted for the Libertarian and the Green Party, a substantial majority said they preferred Biden. Now, 
we assume the Green Party voters are more likely to have preferred Biden to Trump than libertarians would be. So I think it still shows probably a plurality of ex-Gary Johnson voters voted for Biden, or probably the way they would put it is, this time I voted against Trump. The, 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 the newspaper report said they preferred Biden. It may just be they preferred not Trump and Biden was the alternative there. Whereas in 2016, they might have been voting against Hillary. And if they found those two equally distasteful, voted uh, libertarian or for some other third party. That's right. And there was a much larger percentage of people in 2016 who said they had unfavorable opinions of both candidates. And of the group who had unfavorable opinions of both candidates, a substantial number, and I don't remember what it was, uh, did vote for Gary Johnson. This time, there was a much smaller segment of people who who disliked both candidates. Um, Trump was actually a little bit more popular than he had been on the eve of the 2016 election. And Biden was 10 or 15 points more popular than Hillary Clinton. So fewer people who were saying, I don't like either of them. And that probably meant a smaller pool of people that third parties could appeal to. I saw on Twitter complaints from Republicans, some even some notable Republicans who were saying, I hope these voters are happy. The people who voted libertarian in uh, 2020. And there is this sort of sense of either entitlement or that the natural home of these voters uh, when things really matter uh, to to borrow the phrase, uh, belong in the Republican Party. Well, I think there certainly is. They act like you know they they own these votes, and uh, so if they don't get them, they have been deprived of something. I almost um, I feel like it's almost the labor theory of value applied to elections, <laughs> which is we worked hard for these voters, and yet we didn't get them, and yet they didn't work hard for them. That's the point. Um, when you say, I hope these voters are happy, well, I assume people who had a whole year to think about it and decided to vote for Joe Jorgensen are happy that she got uh, about 1.2% of the vote. Uh, they're probably not as happy as they would be if she had won. Um, but if you choose to vote for a third candidate, and and especially if you choose to do that in a battleground, say, you know, it's one thing, and I, I know there are people, I see them on Facebook, saying, I live in Massachusetts, so it doesn't matter. I can vote for the Green Party or the Libertarian Party. Naturally, on my Facebook page, it's more likely people saying, I'm going to vote Libertarian. Or I live in Alabama, so I'm going to vote Libertarian because I know Trump is going to carry the state. I don't have to care about it. Um, if you're in a swing state, though, you have been hearing for months that your state was a swing state. And so if, having heard that for months, having observed Trump's performance and Biden's performance to the extent that you could see Biden, um, you choose to vote for Joe Jorgensen, then presumably it's because you really didn't want to vote for one of the other candidates. And so maybe they are happy that they voted their conscience. What do we know about how gettable those libertarian votes are to begin with? Uh, Matt Welch at Reason noted an analysis by some election forecasters that was written earlier this year that said, quote, some third party voters are just not gettable by the major parties. Well, I'm sure that's true. Um, the Libertarian Party between 1980 and 2012 um, hovered around half a percent of the vote. And at half a percent, sure, it could still swing a really close election like, you know, Wisconsin this year, Georgia this year. Um, but it's pretty hard to cater to those half a percent. But in 2012 with Gary Johnson and 2020 with Joe Jorgensen, it, the Libertarians got one percent. That's a little more interesting. And Gary Johnson got over three percent in 2016. So somebody did get two thirds of Johnson's vote. Um, whether that was Trump or Biden or possibly staying home. Maybe some people just didn't vote this time. But it looks like this time, a lot of the previous Gary Johnson voters who maybe had been just a pox on both your houses last time, this time were saying, I've seen Trump in office. I 
don't like some aspects of what he's doing. He spends money like there's no tomorrow. He's caused trade wars. Um, I don't like the way he stirs up uh, divisive conflicts in the country. Um, so I'm not voting for him. I'm going to vote for the guy who smashed Bernie Sanders in the primaries. And obviously some did not choose that. They, they did vote uh, for Donald Trump. Uh, but one thing we see over the last three elections anyway, if not more than that, is when people are more disgruntled with the major party candidates, they might give three and a half percent to the libertarian and six percent to third parties overall. And when they're less disgruntled, um, there's only about two percent of the electorate. So in that sense, you could say four percent of the electorate was gettable after 2016 and somebody got them. Just some back of the envelope math. I counted 17 Senate races where the Republican candidate for U.S. Senate got a higher fraction of the vote than Donald Trump. And that's irrelevant to whether or not uh, those candidates or Donald Trump won their races. But that indicates, at least for a lot of voters, I'm broadly Republican, but I don't really care for this guy, Trump. It does appear that that's the case. And some of the never Trump activists like the Lincoln Project um, were insisting, don't just vote against Trump. If you don't like the way Trump has has conducted his presidency, don't just vote against him. Vote against all these Republican senators who enabled it. But it looks like while they may have had some effect in as they say, giving Republicans permission to vote against Trump, it doesn't look like very many Republicans decided not to vote for Republican senators and Senate candidates. And there were noticeable numbers, I think, of straight ticket Republican voting, except at the presidential level. So yes, I think there were, and it, and it isn't a lot. Trump had maybe 90, 95 percent approval among Republicans. But if he lost eight percent of Republicans who the Senate candidate did not lose, then that would make the difference in Trump losing a state that a Senate candidate might have won. David Bowes is executive vice president of the Cato Institute and author of The Libertarian Mind. Subscribe to the Cato Daily Podcast anywhere you please and follow us on Twitter at Cato Podcast.